All right, everyone. Welcome back to the We Shall Not Sleep podcast. Thank you very much for joining us this week. Happy Camel Day to everybody. I hope this week has been treating you well, that you're able to get some rest, stay focused, relax, whatever that you do. I pray that that is something that you are experiencing. I appreciate the listenership wherever you may find us, however you might be listening, whether that is through SoundCloud, where we are hosted, we're grateful for them, our YouTube channel, or anywhere that you get your podcasts. I'm glad that you have decided to make us a part of your weekly routine here. I hope to have another interview with Pastor James again before the end of the month because, my goodness, is it just incredible what... like the community of God in the church can do, and that's what I've been experiencing. And I will tell you, I what I want to share with you tonight is kind of it's something I'm working through. I want to preach about, but I, I think it's important that I, in a way, use this podcast as as a platform that's a lot more laid back, and yet at the same time bouncing ideas and like making it a collaborative effort as a team. And one of the things that I really have been thinking about is this notion of Babylon from the Old Testament and the United States. Because, you know, personally, I don't see how you can get around the fact that we are the one of the most evil empires ever to live. And you got to think about kind of like World War II, where that kind of puts us on the map on the world scale. And we really haven't stopped bombing countries, invading countries, going to war, causing the deaths of millions upon millions of people acting in our own self-interests, having military bases everywhere. And I think now you're starting to kind of see the the hubris of all of that. I think people are kind of more aware in this country about, about that. And I'm not saying there aren't just wars. It's just saying, hey, why is it that we're doing what we're doing in this particular circumstance? Is there potentially a higher way to what we're doing and what we have been doing. Part of my personal struggle is looking at the nature of humanity and its sin nature and versus what we were uh, designed to do by God. This is a teleological argument that it's really anti what God, it's completely anti God. It's anti human to, for war and all the reasons that we've gone to war. And I, you combine that fact with the amount of abortions that we've committed. We, we sacrifice our children on the altar of convenience. And there's so much reward for laziness. There's hardly a lot of, hardly any justice for true evil. We celebrate evil. We spit in the face of God when it comes to design sexually. And so when you propagate that, you perpetuate it. It it very much reminds me a lot of the empires in the old Testament, such as Babylon. And, what I've been rereading a lot in my daily readings and just coming back to what I believe from a sermon perspective are the stories that lead up to the Babylonian exile, which you can see in Jeremiah, Isaiah um, in particular. But you can look at the kings and all the things that ha- happen around them. You look at First and Second Chronicles, First and Second Kings, Ezra, Nehemiah. Uh, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and a lot of these players around the scene around the same time. I mean, yeah, we, we do believe there's th- there's a couple thousand years of history in the Old Testament uh, for sure, uh, and that that's documented. And and yet this time of captivity, where you have the creation of humanity, the establishment uh, of of e- Eden, the fall of humanity, the redemption plan of the Lamb that was already slain before the foundation of the world. Was laid, you know. God did not view us as a backup plan. He didn't hit. He wasn't just dumbstruck. He was like, okay, well, we're gonna go to work. We're gonna, you know, I've given you guys free will. You've taken that, and now you're gonna experience the consequences of, of your sin and your sinful actions. So, part of what we are seeing today and how we interpret the Bible is the story of. Humanity, Israel, you know, him uplifting a nation, not because they had anything to offer him, but he chose to out of love and mercy, grace, to uplift them out of the dirt and to love them and to be their God and show that there is a different way. There's a harmony that you can live with when it comes to nature, your neighbors, your family, and to God that gives you all of those things that provides a perspective in a way of life that is so much healthier for everybody involved. And then as they remained faithful to him, as they obey him throughout all of the leaders, 
He takes them into this promised land he that's flowing of milk and honey. You look at the establishment of the covenant with Abraham, leading out of captivity, uplifting uh, uplifting them and saying, I'm going to establish this place with Moses. And then you have the rest of the stories and then the, the rise of King David uh, and his, his fall and his, his, like all the, all the things that go on in his life, then the, the desecration at the end of his lifetime. But then there's the rule of Solomon, who's even more successful than his father was. And then he sins and then the kingdom is split. And then you see Judah and Israel, these two kingdoms. And there's just, they're just vying. All. I mean, Israel had all bad kings. Judah was intermixed with some good kings, such as Josiah, Hezekiah. And speaking of Hezekiah, you know, it's somebody that he is told about once he actually entertains these these ambassadors from Babylon. They they come to him in Isaiah thirty nine. You can see this again in Second Chronicles as well, where they come to him, and they these envoys just get a whole tour of the kingdom. They get a tour of the military, everything else, which is just bad strategy. And Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah confronts Hezekiah and says, what have you done? Why have you done this? And, and Hezekiah takes it all for himself, says, this is all the stuff that I have. It's not the stuff the Lord's given me. And then he's told, well, because you've done this, all of the things that you just said are going to be carried off to Babylon. And instead of asking God for mercy in God's hand to stay that, he said, this is great news because it's not going to happen in my lifetime. Like, are you kidding me? Well, that's eventually what happens is that the Babylonians come in and they invade and they take people with them. And I've talked about this thing, exiles in Babylon. Well, what I haven't thought about, and this is just an increase with, with knowledge when it comes to how our world operates. When you look at how much money America spends on the amount of money that's going outside this country, the amount of money that uh, the tax takes it from the taxpayers that gets spent on so much waste. Our med our medical system is so expensive. People can barely afford housing. You have people who are on disability that shouldn't be. You have people that are getting food stamps and all these things, all these governmental programs because they're being subsidized by the actual American worker. And like the average middle class person who's trying to work, maybe one or two jobs is subsidizing laziness and slothfulness. And I'm not discounting the people who actually need this stuff. No, I'm not. That's why they were originally designed with a different intention. But you have all this stuff going on. There's injustice everywhere. We, we are increasingly learning more about our food, how it's grown, how it's sourced, how it's raised. The From everywhere, from the seeds that we buy to the chemicals we treat it with to all of the ingredients that we use in our foods, the the fact that hardly anything is natural anymore and a lot of the pro processed stuff causes a lot of problems when it comes to health. And then once you get hooked on medication, that that profits the first pharmaceutical companies and there's no incentive to get better. And you look at all these things and you look at um, the acts of violence, you look at just the depression, the rates of suicide, substance abuse, addictions across the board, and what's interesting is that we all, I think there's every American would, would agree that like things could be better, you know, on every level, right? And yet the theme throughout the Old Testament is that during these times, God always talks about a faithful remnant. A faithful remnant will remain. A faithful remnant will be with you. And as they're being carried off to Babylon, I mentioned this a, a month and a half or two months ago on the podcast, is that God actually says, you know, as you go, I'm still going to be with you. I will gather you back to Jerusalem. There's going to be this reckoning, but... I, you are going into the captivity, but don't be surprised if you experience prosperity. Don't be surprised if you still experience the ups and downs of this world, including the ups in captivity. And that's exactly what's happened here. I mean, Babylon prospered, but at the end of that 70 years when God called them back to Jerusalem, when Ezra pops up on the scene, Zerubbabel, Nehemiah, that are tasked with taking the city of Jerusalem back, now that has been completely desecrated and laid to waste, they come back, they rebuild the temple to give a holy dwelling place for God. They rebuild the city walls to make it a fortified city that's not going to be in, invaded or taken advantage of, plundered, stolen from, etc. And they come back. and But there's, here's the thing. There are people that were left over in Babylon that didn't want to come back. I said this. This is a repeat, but they didn't come back. And you know what? They were slaughtered when Babylon was taken over by the Persians. Right? So... It's fascinating, and I'm wondering if the faithful remnant, though, there's so much evil that's in the world. There's so many awful things that happen every day to people. Death, suffering, chaos, tragedies, all the time. 
And my mom always growing up would talk about not that we are guaranteed because we don't go against scripture here. We don't against uh, just, it. We're not a prosperity go, uh, gospel preaching podcast either. I'm not a belief that it, because you serve God that you're going to somehow have enough money to buy a private jet or support somebody else who can buy a private jet. By no means. What I would say is that, like my mom has talked about, is that there is a hand of blessing. God does not ignore His children, especially when they, especially when they reach out to him when they cry out for help god just doesn't on a whim go oh, i guess i'll help I, they've cried long enough i just uh, stop the whining i'll finally bless you no we believe a uh, prayer is powerful we are taught to anoint each other with holy oil when one of us is sick prayer is powerful fasting we know about the benefits of fasting more and more about intermittent fasting and what that does for the body like huh it's interesting jesus only told us that two thousand years ago right sermon on the mount and yet what I find is that if we are quote unquote exiles in Babylon, what if we're the faithful remnant? What if from all the evils that are in the world out there that children don't know about because parents, it's their job to protect them, right? Because you are aware of the evils that maybe some of the things that don't visit upon us, such as violence or harm, we, we're not we're not immune from those things. I'm not saying that either. But there's so many people that I know are so blessed in this nation as Christians, and I just wonder if God's honoring the faithful remnant. Meanwhile, the there's so many people that have condemned themselves by the way they've lived. And in our country, I think, we're in deserving a judgment. So I'm always wondering if if instead of like the asteroid or a towering inferno coming down and just sweeping us all up and putting us out of our misery, you know, which I sometimes I joke about, but you have you have groups of people that are quote unquote anti human, people who believe in in sex changes for, for young kids and hormone blockers and then abortion. And it's like, well, if, if you're sterilizing children and you're aborting them, you're not going to be around. God's judgment is just you allowing, allowing yourself to experience the consequences of your own behavior. You won't be around in a generation because you're not having any kids and the kids that you do have are sterile and can't have kids of their own. So wouldn't, wouldn't in like 25 years this be the most quote unquote conservative country from just a political standpoint? I'm not making a good or bad judgment. I'm just saying like, it, it's just like, is that just God's judgment allowing our own stupidity to, to take, take root? I, I don't know what the answers are to that, but I'm just, I'm trying to think is that not that we're special, but our world is not great right now, especially in, in America. And I love this country, especially the way it was started. And cause you can't write the constitution. You can't write the bill of rights without, um, some sort of biblical, uh, something lasting. I mean, the fact that all men are created equal, you can't, you only get that from the Bible. We didn't live up to that for the longest time, but we were trying to change the conscience of a nation. And so changing the conscience of a nation, let's say an abortion takes a long time, right? A long time. So when I'm, when I'm looking, when I'm looking at like things are not what they, not what they seem. And, and not what we what we don't like, and I I am just I'm just wondering if we're actually in the midst of judgment right now. And for those who have lived a blessed life, the faithful remnant. Are we the faithful remnant? That's my question. And it's in the midst of judgment. Is it possible that God's merciful hand? is stayed for us if we remain faithful to him. That's my question for us tonight. I don't know. I don't know what that does for you. I don't know where you go. I don't know how you feel about it. But I wanted to get you thinking. And again, uh, th- this is this is taken from the books of Isaiah. If you want to read Isaiah 39 through 42, uh, I believe, and I'll find this passage, the Babylonian exile in Scripture. I want to talk to you about this. Oh, Second Chronicles. Let me find this out. And I'm sorry about this. This is there, there's so many uh, emphasis on this, but I would start with the Isaiah uh, uh, chapter, and let me find the actual biblical accounts. Babylon exile. Okay, so here we go. What I'd like you guys to look through. 
Um, 2 Kings 24. You can look at Jeremiah's chapters 20 to 22, 24 through 29, 32, 34 through 45. Um, and then you have Lamentations, which which is about that very thing. So, I mean, there's there's so much about this that's written throughout all of the prophets. And then coming back from that, uh, you can read the entirety of Ezra and Nehemiah, um, looking at those passages and how um, those treat those exiles who then return, choose to come back and, and fulfill God's promises. So that's uh, some options for us tonight. I, I hope that this reaches you and makes sense. May God bless you guys. May God keep you, continue to hold you guys to in such a high regard for your listenership. So may God bless you surely, and may God continue to keep you surely.